Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 32, part A. We are in section 8.2, part 3 of 4. And in this video, we're going to learn how to actually calculate the confidence interval when we do not know sigma. Uh, up to this point, we have been in this lecture series for section 8.2. We've introduced the student's T distribution, talked about degrees of freedom, how to read a T table, and find critical values T sub C out of that T table. Now we're going to look at how we compute a confidence interval. And so I'm going to give you the um, formula for a confidence interval. And so the general form of this is just X bar plus or minus E, where E is the margin of error. So when we do not know sigma, when sigma is unknown, we're going to use S to estimate sigma. That's the best we can do. We can use the sample standard deviation. So our margin of error is given here. It's E equals T sub C, our critical value, times S, the sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of the sample size. I can write this all in one formula like this. So X bar plus or minus T sub C times S over the square root of N. I've just plugged in for E here. Or I can write it in interval notation. This is interval notation. And so um, this, the lower value is always the smaller. This is always smaller. And this is always larger. And so I have x bar minus uh, t sub c s over the square root of n and x bar plus t sub c times s over the square root of n for the upper number. Okay, so here are the steps that we want to follow. The first step that we need to do is determine whether the distributional requirements are satisfied. That's always number one. The second step we need to do is we need to find the critical value, t sub c. Then we'll calculate e, then we can calculate the confidence interval, and then finally and most importantly, we will interpret the confidence interval. If we don't interpret the confidence interval, we have not done statistics, we have just done math. But the statistics part of this is that we are interpreting correctly this confidence interval in such a way that almost anyone can understand what we're saying. Okay, so let's suppose an archaeologist discovers sever seven fossil skeletons from a previously unknown species of miniature horses. They reconstruct these seven skeletons, and they find that the shoulder heights, the height of the horse at the shoulder in centimeters, are given here. These are the seven values. So the first thing we'll need to do when we're given actual values is calculate the sample mean. And so I have done that here. I write the formula for the mean, and then I, I plug in the values. I get the answer, and then in this case, I'm rounding it to two decimal places using the round-off rule because my data has one decimal place. Using the round-off rule, X bar should have two decimal places. And then I need to calculate my sample standard deviation. I'm going to use, um, uh, I'm going to calculate S squared, the variance, uh, so that I don't have to pull that square root along everywhere. And so in order to do this, remember that we can make a table x, x squared. We take each of the values of x that we put here, 45.3, and then we put the squared value here, and we add them up. So that's how you calculate the standard deviation, or in this case, the variance. And then when we get done, we took the, so here's the variance, and I take the standard deviation of that, and I get 1.90, um, oh, I think that's 1.19. So let me verify. Yes, it's 1.19. I missed a 1 here. So that's 1.190038. And so I'm rounding that to two decimal places as 1.19. Now, here is the question. Find a 99% confidence interval for mu, which is the mean shoulder height of the entire population of this species of miniature horses. Again, I would be cautious about saying it's the entire species, uh, entire population, because maybe we've just found the first uh, sample of these or, or first example of these miniature horses, but maybe they lived lived somewhere else in the world, and maybe the, due to uh, uh, 
environmental conditions, they may have been a different size. So um, I'd be careful about my interpretation here. Uh, but uh, for right now, if this was the only sample we had, we could say, yes, as far as we know, this is a confidence interval for the whole population of this species of miniature horses. So our first step is, are the distributional requirements satisfied? Okay. So I look at my question here, and I look to see what my sample size is. And there are seven skeletons, so n is equal to seven. And then I'm looking for, does it say anywhere in here that it's normally distributed, and it does not. So not normal, normally distributed. So no. If this is all the information we have, we can't do anything else because we only have seven samples and we don't know they're normally distributed. Now, in order to do this problem, now we're going to assume that it is known that the shoulder heights of miniature horses are normally distributed. So if I assume this, now I can do the rest of the problem. But as the problem is written, I cannot do it. Okay? So um, in real life, I would not do this problem this way. I would use another method. But we're going to uh, use the method that's in this section. So we're going to pretend that we know that these are normally distributed and proceed. So the second step, I want to find T sub C. So I have to figure out what C is. So I come back here and it says 99% confidence interval. This is C. The percentage in front of confidence interval is C. So 99% is equal to 0.99. And then I need my degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom, n minus 1, n was 7. So 6 are my degrees of freedom. I need uh, T sub C equals T.996. So I'm going to go to my T table and look for 6 degrees of freedom and 0.99. So I've got 0.99 is here and 6 degrees of freedom. So that is going to give me 3.707. And that is the value I found here. Now I need to find E, the margin of error. So that is T sub C times S over the square root of N. So when you're doing problems on the test, you're going to be asked to find a confidence level, confidence interval. And you have to find out whether you have S or not. If you have S, you're going to use this formula that has T in it. And so I always tell students S and T go together in the alphabet, and they also go together in the formula for the margin of error. And now I just plug in for those values. I found T sub C here, so that goes in front, 3.707. And earlier, I calculated that the standard deviation was 1.19, and I know that N is 7, so I plug those in. I multiply and divide here as needed. I get 1.6673 something, so that is approximately 1.67 to two decimal places. And now I need to calculate the confidence interval. The 99% confidence interval is given by x bar plus or minus e. x bar, I calculated as 46.14 up here. I calculated the average right here. And then I calculated e as 1.67. So I take that. And now in interval notation, I take... Um, x bar minus e, which is 46.14 minus 1.67, and 46.14 plus 1.67, and that gives me the final answer here of 44.47 uh, to 47.81. This is an interval. This is a range of values, and so I am 99% confident that this interval contains the true mean height, the shoulder height, of these miniature horses. Another way to write this is this way, although it's not favored as much if we're publishing. So um, it says mu is between 44.47 and 47.81. Now we need the most important part, the interpretation. So if I put in here the blanks, true mean blank, oops, And that's what we would have to fill in, what's underlined. So we are confidence level, C, in percentage. So 99% confident that the interval, this is our CI, 
from 44.47 to 47.81 contains the true mean and the mean of what? The shoulder heights of this species of miniature horses. And this was tested with a simple random sample, right, of n equals 7 fossils in this case, 7 something. Okay. So that is our interpretation. Remember that we, uh, the 99% represents the percentage of these confidence intervals that should actually contain the true mean, right? And so if I repeat this 100 times, 99 of those confidence, if I, if I repeat this process, in other words, I take, if I could, take 99 different samples of size 7, over and over again. Each time I calculate the confidence interval, I'm going to get a different confidence interval. Okay, And so, um, out of those 100 different confidence level uh, intervals, so if I did this 100 times, I'd have 100 different confidence intervals. Out of those, 99 of them should actually contain mu, but one of those 100 will not contain mu, or should not contain mu. All right. So that's it for this lecture series, and um, we have one more video with the uh, example, another example, and then that will finish out section 8.2. Please remember to scan your lecture notes before midnight, the date listed in the course calendar. If you have questions, please come to virtual office hours. If you can't do that, email me, but when you email me, email me a picture of the problem so I know what problem you're working on, and a picture of your work so I can see how you're approaching it and best help you. So please take care of yourself and stay safe. We'll see you next time.